Have you ever wondered how pros seem to fly through the aid station, barely slow down, get all they need, and cruise to the finish line of an Ironman triathlon as if there wasn't even aid necessary? I'm retired professional triathlete, CEO of Diamond Bikes, TJ Tollickson, and today we're gonna to talk about five things that you can do to have a better aid station experience in your next triathlon. We just finished the Ironman Des Moines, and I was the captain of run aid station number four, which happened to be a turnaround point on uh, the run course. And I don't wanna brag or anything, but well, yeah, I'm gonna brag. We had the best aid station out there. And the reason we had the best aid station, well, besides being awesome, was that I've got a lot of experience. I have a very particular set of skills. I've got a lot of experience. It helped me make a better aid station for my athletes, and I can help you get better at running your aid station. So one of the things we talk about is there are no timeouts in triathlon. They start the gun, you go, there's no timeout. If you stop to go to the bathroom, great, the timer's still running. If you stop and walk and transition, the timer is still running. So let's jump into these five things. Number one, plan your nutrition. This is a big one. I've got a spreadsheet that I use. I've gone over it in videos. If you need it, email me. I will get this to you so you can see what it looks like. Plan your nutrition, okay? Once you have you planned your nutrition in a spreadsheet, know your calories per hour, your grams of carbohydrate per hour, and your milligrams of sodium per hour, and some caffeine on a per hourly basis, the rest of your race will become a lot easier. Plan this out. I love it when a plan comes together. Not only plan it, Practice that nutrition in all your training. It's the most important thing you can do. So once you have your nutrition planned, you need to plan your aid stations. So if you know that on the run, you're gonna try to drink eight ounces of water and eight ounces of Gatorade, and you know that we have six ounce cups that are filled about half full, you can do the math on what you need. You're gonna need two and a half cups each. At our aid stations for the Ironman, we had a setup where it went water, Gatorade, Red Bull, gel, food, and cola, Gatorade, water, okay? So you can come in and out. Now we had some ice mixed in there as well, which is really important, we'll get to that. Ice, ice. But that's what the aid station looks like, so you need a plan. So if I'm drinking water and Gatorade, first thing I'm gonna do is run through the first aid station, grab two cups of water, try to drink as much as I can out of those, uh, and then I'm gonna go into the next one, grab two cups of Gatorade, try to drink as much out of those, okay? And if I know I'm just going Gatorade at this aid station, I don't need gel, I can blow by the gel tent, okay? I can grab two more Gatorades, two more waters on my last return. It should be enough to get everything that I need for my aid station, minus a little bit of spillage. If I drop one of those cups, okay, you have to make a game time decision. How early in the race is this? Do I need to go back and get this? or is there some way I can pick up one more cup before I get to the next aid station? The last thing you ever wanna do is be super behind in your nutrition because you will not catch up. Fall behind, you can't catch up. Any man who falls behind is left behind. Here's a pro tip for you. If you need a gel, try to grab the gel the aid station before. So if you know you need to take a gel at mile six, at roughly the mile five aid station, grab a gel and shove it in your jersey, or down your pants. Is that appropriate? Appropriate. Store that gel for later, because then you're coming into your aid station that you need to eat it, eat it right before your aid station, because then you can use the Gatorade and the water to wash it down. So if you need that gel, grab it at the aid station before, store it quickly, continue on, and then at the aid station you need it, as you're coming in, before you get there, take that gel, quickly put it in, swallow it, wash it down. All right, next thing, cooling your body. This is a very important one, okay? This is where the ice comes in and some of the water. There's ice in there. Even if it's moderately hot, if it's 70 degrees outside, it might seem like a nice cool day to be outside. That's too hot for exercise, so you need to cool your body. Unless it's 55 degrees or less, you need to cool your body in the aid station. So, how do you do that? Sometimes water works great, evaporative cooling. If it's super humid like it is in Des Moines for the Ironman, the water will help cool, but it's not very effective because it's not gonna evaporate, so there you need the ice. Get the ice, shove it down your jersey, shove it down your pants, front, back, hold it in your hands, put it in your mouth, stick it in your hat to put it on your head. 
anything that you can do. I got a trick that I like with pantyhose. You can put a pair of pantyhose, put some ice in the legs of it, wrap it around your neck, and you basically have two giant huge tracks of land. Rocky Mountain oysters full of ice that you can then put inside your jersey to cool yourself. This helps maintain your core body temperature, which anyone who raced Des Moines knows, once your core body temperature is too hot, boy, the rest of your race is really messed up. So um, cool your body as much as possible. The next thing, plan on running the aid station. Again, there are no timeouts in triathlon. Plan on running. Only stop if it's necessary. Necessary? I've been there. I've had to walk through aid stations. Plan on running. Be mentally prepared to run through the aid station. Again, if you take an extra 20 to 30 seconds, man, that's a lot of work you gotta do to run on the backside to make up that pace, okay? There's no timeout. You gotta keep moving. The last thing you could do, my number five tip, is practice, practice, practice. Practice your aid stations in training, okay? I've had two wonderful places. I trained a lot in Des Moines, Iowa and Tucson, Arizona. And in Des Moines, Iowa, I do a lot of my long runs at uh, Raccoon River Park. It's a 5K loop, and I'm able to set up an aid station every 5K on the back of my, my vehicle. So I set it up, water, Gatorade, Red Bull, cola, gel, everything that I would need in a regular aid station I have, and I practice running it. I set it up just like the race, I run through it, I grab my fluids, and I keep running. Okay, one of the hardest things to do is you're trying to chug fluids, chug a gel, Red Bull, cola, maybe a banana. You're trying to do all this as quickly as possible and keep running. Well, guess what? If you don't practice, you're not gonna be very good at it. So practice, 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 practice. So you may seem like a lunatic to the other people at the park, uh, but do it. In Tucson, Arizona, we had Reed Park, uh, which was absolutely fantastic for the exact same reason. 2.85, 2.84, 85 around there, mile loops. Same thing, set up an aid station, run through it, keep doing loops. Yes, it is boring. Yes, you can switch directions on your loop. You can do little turnarounds just like they have in races, so you can practice your turnarounds as well. But practicing your aid stations is the number one thing that you can do to improve your efficiency in the aid stations. Remember, there are no timeouts in triathlon, so the more you practice, the more you plan, the better you will be. If you enjoyed this video, you wanna see more of it, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I've got all kinds of great Ironman tips on training, nutrition, racing, amazing content. I would love for you to join me on this journey. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Check it out every week.